Where You At, Part 2, St. Simon's Sock, starts now. I just want to quickly yeah. say something as well. Um, Mary always says this, and I know everybody laughs because it's so funny, but, you know, she always mentioned to find that quiet area, you know, that, that's away from all the distractions. And one of the places that she mentions, which it's funny, but it's actually really true, is the restroom. It's like you go to the bathroom in your own house, and it's just like that one place that is just all quiet. I mean, I, I laughed at it at first, but to be honest, after she mentioned it, it's something that I do a lot and I've done a lot. So it's like, it's that one moment that you can find yourself away from all the distractions, all the noise. And it's just like, it's your way of just saying, okay, this may be the weirdest place, but it's the place that it allows me to give that time to focus to you. So it's just it's just an option, you know, just finding a quiet place. If the restroom ends up being that quiet place, then hey, so be it. You got to make use of what you got. It became, it, became my, it became my favorite place in college, too, because if I had to study for tests and especially, you know, we're Latinos, we have a house full of people always. at all times. We have a house full of people. So I would just go into the bathroom and I would sit there and I'll study. And you could hear everybody outside, ah, la, 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 but I was in there studying for my test. No. Um, <laughs> Christian, where you at with God? Superman. With, with, with me, I, like, where am I with God? In the beginning of this whole, where the whole pandemic thing started, I started, like, doubting myself and God at the same time. So, like... And then when, when, when this whole pandemic thing started, I was like, I, I like, I didn't, I, I didn't, I started questioning a lot, a lot. Like, what, why, why is this happening now? All, all of a sudden, like, I'm in the middle of me doing my stuff for, I, I'm in the middle of me doing stuff for college. And like, the, the, and like, like what, like what everyone was saying, because you know, like everything transitions for online for me, so like it's really hard for me to focus in the house. With everyone home at all at the same time. So like, I, I always find little ways. I was trying to find ways here and there to fill in prayer. Also, doing stuff for for my class at the same time. That's yeah. okay. I don't want to butcher your name. I'm just going to spotlight you because. I don't want to butcher it. I tend to butcher people's names. It's Janessa. Janessa. Okay, now I get that. Yeah. See, I was thinking Jan Jan Janessa. So. No, it's Janessa. Janessa. Okay. Yeah. So, so where are you at with God? Uh, where I'm at with God, I'm just very thankful and grateful. Honestly, like for the times I felt like I was alone, for the time that I needed Him the most, I. Pretty sure he was there. Um, I feel very grateful and thankful for him because I did have COVID-19 and it was something hard for me. It was something hard for my family, but I was the only one who actually tested positive and I'm actually thankful for that. Um, I'm also thankful because he's actually giving me another little sister in November. And it's like, it's like he puts little things in my life to like tell me, you know, to keep on going, to be myself and it's like especially with prayer I was a type of person where I did pray but I didn't pray a lot and it's now you can find me praying constantly and constantly and when church started to reopen I didn't want to go to church because like after this whole situation happened I decided to go and I was like you know what this is me saying thank you thank you for giving me everything like thank you for even giving me the opportunity again to like breathe <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Thank God. Thank God for that. You know, um and and maybe you might have the antibodies and you could um, you know, go to Matthew and he could find the cure. Okay, that leaves Mary. Where you at? 
We're good. I'm on the couch. No, let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I have to agree with uh, some of the kids. It's been tough. COVID um, has been a life-changing uh, thing for everyone. Um, this has become our new norm. Uh, but it has allowed me, and I have to say, um, to participate more with the masses. Like, I, I am able to be in the masses every morning. Um, while I was at work, I couldn't do that. So I make sure that I'm in the 8.30 a.m. mass and that I'm listening or, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm participating like if I was sitting in the church. So it has allowed me to have that closest again with him in that way. Um, with my with my prayer and, and the youth group and all that, um, it's tough because we know as youth ministers, and you heard it all through the meetings that we had with the archdiocese, how hard it has become to keep the kids uh, believing in God and trusting God. And I think that that has been one of the difficulties due to the pandemic, um, that the kids feel like, okay, I, I, where is he right now when this is happening? Um, and, and we don't tend to realize that the more we pray, the less drama we get. You know, the more we pray, the more light we see. The more we pray, the more darkness stays away. And, and I've learned that, like, you know, I'm getting ready to have my surgery in the end of this month. And people keep saying, oh, aren't you afraid of this? And I'm like, I'm trusting God on this one. You know, it usually, it usually hits me after the surgery. Once I wake up and I'm like, thank you, God, I'm awake. You know, um, and then I start bawling. Oh, my God, it could have been this. It could have been that, you know. But um, I think that um, as a youth minister, sometimes you feel frustrated. And I have to say, not with God, but, well, with what the, the kids are going through, um, which is so hard for us to try to let them see, you know, like I, I hear Johnny and, you know, and like Johnny said at first, um, she was going through difficult times when it came to faith and being locked up at home. And, you know, and, and again, like I said, us Latinos, we have a family that and a half in our house, not a family, we have a family and a half. So um, it's tough because there's no privacy, your home. And even if you want to study or read a book, that doesn't happen. You know, we're not allowed to go sit in the backyard and read or you sit in your porch and read or anything like that, especially in the Bronx. Um, so it's really hard. Um, uh, but I do trust God with all my heart and soul, and he knows that. Um, they laugh because uh, I tell them that I call, I, when I started youth ministry with the kids, I say, my name for him is Papi Jesus. And I talk to him like if I was talking to my father, which he is my father. And I sit and I go to the bathroom, and that's what Matthew was talking about. And I have a whole conversation. Even when I was dating, I'll be like, well, Jesus, what do you think about this? You know, Papi Jesus, what do you think about this guy? And I told him, I said, we have to learn um, to put things in his hands first before we even make a decision. Hey, God, I'm trusting you with this. You know, um, I'm trusting you and, and trust him. Um, like Hardy um, just spoke, and I know that this has been a tough summer for him and his family um, and, and probably Brenda too. Brenda is... Um, upset about what's happening in the world you know we've talked a little bit and i know that seeing things right now for them is hard um because they're young you know and and we expect things to be black and white when we're a teenager okay it's either yes or it's either no there's no in between you know um and if if it's yes it has to be yes on surround sound not yes on a normal it has to be 3d surround sound and theater action and all that involved in it and if it's no, it can't be a no because it has to be a yes. And and I think right now we, we have to learn um, even more so to trust God with what's happening. Um, in a lot of ways, I think that due to prayer, it has brought a lot of families closer together. Um, due to prayer, um, we're learning to appreciate each other a little bit more. I think we had lost having dinners together as a family. We had lost looking at each other as a family. Um, there was a lot of stuff that we were losing. And I think maybe this was God's way of telling us we need to wake up, you know, and, and take advantage of what I've given you. I've given you a family, you know, um, and I, that's where I'm at. I think right now with my prayer, um, I try to make time, even if it's in the middle of the day and I'm working from home, I take that few minutes and after the mass or I want, you know, listen to the mass, play a Christian song. Like you said, I have, I play all my music sometimes if I don't want to watch the news anymore because I'm sick of it. 
I'll go on YouTube or my TV and I'm playing the whole Christian playlist. Um, and it keeps me going. But I think, you know, that that is where I'm at right now. I think um, I'm trusting him with what's happening uh, with myself, um, trusting him with the youth group. I keep putting the, the youth specially um, in all my prayers because... I don't want to lose um, the youth group. I don't want to lose the kids. I don't want the kids to end up in the streets, you know, and that's my fear. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I feel the same way. Um, you know, my, my kids in my youth group, they're sick of Zoom. And um, and then they, we, we had a meeting with them and I didn't like the way it was because they, they were so happy to see each other. And I was expecting 10 and 25 came, you know, and... They were uh, too close, but, um, you know, um, and, and something that um, Cynthia put in an email a few weeks ago that the kids of this generation are not afraid of COVID-19. They're afraid of quarantine, you know, afraid of being away from their friends. It's true. And, um, and, and, that's, and that's how it is right now. And I, I know I, I have two young bones. Well, the older my daughter's going to college, but um, you know, like our views are different on on certain things, and and we were you know arguing over the Cliff Floyd and 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 the protests, and you know, and I'm I'm okay with the protests, and I understand that what happened was murder. I just don't agree with the you know gonna raid the Nike store and you know and exactly and start taking sneakers and stuff, um, but um, you know. Throughout COVID nineteen, with me, I was, I and, and if you remember in those early meetings, I was always worried about like, oh my God, you know, every day I'm hearing someone's dying in the hospital, and um, you know, it took being on vacation during Holy Week, you know, to um, start up our digital ministry with my pastor that he uh, started to um, do masses in the chapel and in the, in the, in the rectory, um, and. And just start to, um, you know, I calm down a little bit. I, I, cause working in a hospital is crazy. I'm like, oh my god, he could have it. He, could, she could have it. Get away, you know. And um, and I, and I cook. I cook in a hospital. And something that, you know, um, even though I used to think it wasn't an honorable job, but I'm, I'm taking care of the nurses and the doctors who are taking care of the sick. I'm keeping them healthy by feeding them. And um, and it, it, it was hard. It was hard. But it took Holy Week, you know, for um, for us to sit in our living room watching the mass on TV with our candles, and it was and the room dark, you know, and um, it was a beautiful experience. Even though you have to turn this negative into this a positive, positive. Um, and that's why I say, Hardy, you know, like whatever negative is is happening in your life, you know, your challenge is to turn it positive. Think of something positive. And, um, you know, and, and you have support here. I see this and it's great that, you know, you guys still like Zoom, you know, and, um, you know, and, and next time you have a luau, I want to go. <laughs> you know. You missed it. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> Who said that? Me. Your son. Oh, we had a luau. We didn't have, we had a luau. What is he saying? <laughs> No, I thought when we have it in person. In person, he wants he wants the real, you know. Oh. The pig um, with the apple in his mouth and roast. Is that, it. He has the fan uh, facing him. He has the fan facing him, and he's getting muffled. Um, <laughs> but it's funny because uh, you just said um, Wayne about meeting with the kids last Friday. We were um, invited to help one of the sisters with the rosary, and I seriously was expecting maybe like three people to show up. And I was very impressed because we had at least about 10 or 12 of the youth group members there. So I was, it was, I was really impressed and it was so nice to see everybody's face. You know, I kind of, you know, we finished the rosary, we got out of the church, we went to the backyard for like 15 minutes, but it was nice seeing everyone. And, and we kind of like try to keep the social distancing thing and we didn't meet inside. And, and it was sad to a certain point because, you know, our youth group, I tend to hug everyone. As they walk in, I hug everybody. Um, and I think it's my thing. And Father Mark is saying, how do you do it? How do you hug all the kids? And I'm like, I don't know. It just happens automatically. Thank you for joining us on Where You At.